my dreams I've kissed your lips a thousand times I sometimes see you pass outside my So the exponential and logarithms are truly beautiful. So that's what we're going to study in this video, exponentials, logarithms, and their derivatives. Okay, so let's start with exponential functions. Now you've probably seen those before, so what I'll do here is just briefly review what they are and their main properties. So an exponential function is a function of the form a to the x for some positive constant a. So this is different from x to the n. You see now that x is actually in the exponent. Okay, and they satisfy a whole bunch of properties. For example, a to the exponent of x plus y is the same thing as a to the x times a to the y. a to the x minus y is the same thing as a to the x divided by a to the y. a to the x to the exponent y is a to the x times y. And a b to the exponent x is a to the x times b to the x. So you've probably used these properties many times before. What's important here is that a and b are positive numbers, otherwise some of these properties may not hold. So what do exponential functions look like? So they all have very similar properties. First, so they're all functions of the form a to the x, so they will all go through the point 0, 1. Also, you can see that, well, the domain is always the same, it's always all real numbers, because a to the x is defined for any real x, but the range will be all strictly positive numbers, because a to the x for any finite x will always give you a positive non-zero number. Okay, so this is true for any uh, exponential functions. Now I've sketched a graph of a number of those here, so this one's pretty boring. This is 1 to the x, this one is 2 to the x, and this one, the red one, is 2 to the x, uh, 3 to the x. And there's a special choice here, which is the green one, special choice of base. So what is this choice? So this is the choice of base such that the slope of the tangent line at the point 0, 1 is exactly equal to 1. All right, so we can, uh, there is such a choice. You can, in fact, prove that there exists such a choice of base. It is super important, very, very important. Uh, it's denoted by the letter E, and the actual value, which you can calculate, as we will see uh, later, uh, is something like 2.71828 or whatever. And the function e to the x is called a natural exponential function. This is the nicest, most beautiful function ever. You will love it. It's great. It's easy to deal with, and it's super important in mathematics. Okay, let me now introduce logarithmic functions. So what are those? Those are the inverse functions to the exponential functions. So the logarithmic function with base a, which we denote as log and base a of x, is the inverse function of the exponential function a to the x. If you recall the definition of the inverse function, what that means is the following statement, x is equal to a to the y, if and only if, log and base a of x is equal to y. So in other words, log and base a of x means that you're looking for the exponent y such that a to the y equals to x. Another thing we know about inverse functions is that the domain and the range are exchanged. So recall that the range of the exponential functions was uh, all strictly positive numbers. So the domain of logarithm functions is also all strictly positive numbers, while the range of the logarithmic function is the domain of the exponential functions, which were all real numbers. Okay, and we also know from inverse functions that if you start with x, apply a function, then it's inverse, you go back to x, as long as x was in the domain of the function. So in this case, if we apply the exponential, then the logarithm, we go back to x, as long as x is in the domain of the exponential function, which is all real numbers. On the other hand, if you start with x, apply logarithm, then exponential, we go back to x, as long as x is in the domain of the logarithm function, which is all strictly positive numbers. And logarithms satisfy some nice properties. So these are uh, exactly uh, analog of the properties for exponentials. In fact, I'm not going to prove these properties, but you can prove them just starting from the corresponding pro properties for the exponential functions. 
So the logarithm of the product of two functions is always the sum of the logarithms. The logarithm of a quotient is the difference of the logarithms. And logarithm of x to the r is always equal to r times the logarithm of x. So it basically brings down the exponents. So what do logarithmic functions look like? So recall that the graph of an inverse function is given by reflecting with respect to the y equals x axis. So if you sketch the graph, for instance, of the exponential function e to the x and reflect about the y equals x axis, you end up with this graph in orange here, which is the graph of the logarithm in base e of x. And in fact, here I sketched the graph of a number of different logarithmic functions. The blue one is logarithm in base 2, orange one is logarithm in base 3, and the green one is the logarithm in base e of x. So one thing that you see is that they all go through the point 1, 0, which makes sense because all exponential functions go through the point 0, 1, so this is exchanged by uh, reflection with respect to the y equals x-axis. And also you see right away that uh, the domain of all logarithmic functions indeed is all strictly positive real numbers, while their range is all real numbers. Okay, and the logarithm with base e is so important that it has its own name and its own symbol. It's called the natural logarithm. It's denoted by ln of x. So this is the inverse function of e to the x, and just as e to the x is one of the most beautiful functions ever, uh, ln of x is also extremely, extremely beautiful. You'll love it. It satisfies all kinds of nice properties, and it's just awesome. Okay, so before we talk about derivatives of exponentials and logarithms, let me explain a, a formula which is very useful. It's called the change of base formula. So the statement is the following. For any positive number a not equal to 1, the logarithm of x in base a is equal to the natural logarithm of x over the natural logarithm of a. So what that means is that you never really have to deal with logarithm in, in different bases. You can always rewrite everything in terms of natural logarithm, which is very useful and very powerful. All right, so how do we prove that? Well, by definition, the logarithm in base a of x is equal to y, if and only if x is equal to a to the y. That's the statement of logarithms being inverse functions to exponential functions. All right, but starting with this equality, I can certainly now take the natural logarithms natural logarithm on both sides of the equality, and I get ln of x is equal to ln of a to the y. Now using properties of logarithms, I know that ln of a to the y brings down the exponent, so this is equal to y times ln of a. All right, and then I can solve for y. I get that y is equal to ln of x divided by ln of a. But what is y? y was just the logarithm of x in base a. So just substituting, I end up with this statement of the change of base formula. All right, so that might not seem very useful right now, but you see this is a very powerful statement, and we're going to use it quite a bit. All right, so let me now calculate derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. So I'm going to start with the most beautiful and incredible function ever, which is e to the x. So let's calculate its derivative. So we're going to start with the definition of derivatives as being the limit of the difference quotient. Now I can use properties of exponentials here. So e to the x plus h is the same thing as e to the x times e to the h. And I see that I can factor out e to the x from the numerator. So I end up with this expression. And now e to the x does not depend on h whatsoever, so I can pull it out outside of the limit. And I end up with the following limit here. All right, but this limit is 0 over 0, so what is it? It's not obvious at all. But one thing you can realize is that this limit is nothing else than the derivative of the function evaluated at x equals to 0. Right, so this limit really is y prime evaluated at 0. But then what is e to the x? So remember how it was defined. So e to the x is a function such that its tangent line at the point 0, 1 has slope equals to 1, right? That's exactly how we defined the number e. What does that mean? Well, that means that the derivative of e to the x evaluated at x equals to 0 must be precisely 1. So we know what this limit is. This is just 1. Now, this is really, really awesome because that means the derivative is e to the x. So in other words, let me write that in big letters. The derivative of the function e to the x is equal to e to the x itself. Isn't it amazing? 
So the exponential function e to the x is the only function which is such that its derivative is equal to itself. That's another reason that makes uh, this function just incredible. Really, really beautiful. All right, but we've seen something really cool here as well, which is this limit. So the limit, what we've seen is the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h is equal to 1. This is highly non-trivial, and in fact you could take that as a definition of what the number e means. And you can also use that to compute numerically what the value of e is. So let me now calculate the derivative of arbitrary exponential functions. So I take y to be equal to a to the x for an arbitrary positive constant a. So I'm going to use the following trick. I'm going to rewrite a as being the exponential of the logarithm of a. I can always do that because this is just a statement that logarithms and exponentials are inverse functions, and I'm allowed to do that because a is positive. All right, so if I do that, I can substitute this in my function. I'll get that y is equal to e to the ln of a to the x. But by properties of exponentials, this is the same as e to the x times ln of a. And now starting from there, I can try to calculate the derivative. So dy dx is going to be the derivative of this expression e to the x times ln of a. Now I need to use the chain rule because this is a composite function. So I first take the derivative of the outer function, which is the exponential. But remember, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x itself. How beautiful is that? So I'll get just e to the inner function, x times ln of a, times the derivative of the inner function. But this is just a constant times x, so I get e to the x ln of a times ln of a. All right, but then I can go back. e to the x ln of a by properties of the exponential uh, e to the is e to the ln of a to the x times ln of a. This is just a, so I get a to the x times ln of a. So in other words, I end up with the statement that d dx, the derivative of an arbitrary exponential function, is equal to the function itself, but now times the natural logarithm of the base. So only for the case where a is equal to e is this factor here equals to 1, so that the derivative of the function is equal to itself. For arbitrary bases, I have, I have this extra factor here of ln of a. But what about logarithms? So I'm going to start by calculating the derivative of the natural logarithm because it's just so nice like the exponential function e to the x. So how can I calculate that? Well, recall that the definition of the logarithm is that y is equal to ln of x if and only if e to the y is equal to x. That's the, defin the definition as an inverse function for the exponential function. But this is now a relation between y and x, and that's what I'm going to use to calculate the derivative using implicit differentiation. How can I do that? Well, I'm going to take the derivative on both sides of the equation with respect to x using the chain rule because y is itself a function of x. So what will I get? I get on the left hand side ddx of e to the y, the right hand side ddx of x. On the left hand side this is e of a function, so that's a composite function, so I use the chain rule. Derivative of the exponential gives me exponential back, times y prime, the derivative of the inner function, and on the right hand side I just get 1. So I end up with the statement that y prime is equal to 1 over e to the y. But then y is just log of x. So I can substitute back, I'll get 1 over e to the ln of x. But because exponential and logarithms are inverse function, this is really just 1 over x. Pretty awesome. So the result is that the derivative of the natural logarithm is precisely equal to 1 over x. This is very cool, very simple. It's one reason why the natural logarithm is also such a nice function. So finally, I can evaluate the derivative of logarithms in arbitrary bases. It turns out that this is pretty easy. What I'm going to use is the change of base formula that we proved earlier on. So what was this? This was the statement that the logarithm of x in base a is equal to the natural logarithm of x over the natural logarithm of a. So I can use that to calculate the derivative directly. So the derivative will be equal to the derivative of the right-hand side. But ln of a is just a constant, so I can pull it outside of the derivative. And I've just calculated that the derivative of ln of x was equal to 1 over x. 
So I end up with the result 1 over x times ln of a. So in other words, d dx of the log of x and base a is equal to 1 over x times ln of a. And you see that indeed if the base a is equal to e, then ln of e is 1. So I recover the result for the natural logarithm that I just calculated. All right, so let me end this video by summarizing derivatives of exponentials and logarithms. So first, the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x itself, which is just awesome. It's the most beautiful formula ever. On the other hand, the derivative of a to the x is equal to a to the x, but times the natural logarithm of a. And the derivative of the natural logarithm of x is equal to 1 over x, which is also very beautiful, while the derivative of the logarithm of x in base a is equal to 1 over x times the natural logarithm of a. So these are very, very important formula. You need to know them, so if you don't know them already, you should probably memorize them.